Hey everybody, today we're gonna take the Ender 3 that's printing right behind me and we're gonna install the TH3D Easy ABL. Now I was looking through the instructions and I had some questions and I thought, you know what, it's probably better to go straight to the source. So you know what, let's go. Uh, guys? I don't think this is where I was supposed to go. Let's try that again. That's better. All right. So we're here at TH3D Studios, and this is Tim, the owner of TH3D. And I thought we'd bring him in today to install the EZ ABL on my Ender 3. We're gonna get that going. My name's Jim. And this is Tim. And this is the Edge of Tech. So like I said, we're here at TH3D Studios with Tim and we're gonna start installing the Easy ABL on the Ender 3. Tim, why do we wanna do this? Well, first of all, Creality doesn't understand that beds should be flat on your printers. Um, along with other companies, I'm not just gonna take a dump on Creality. <laughs> um, <laughs> but basically what the ABL system does, and it's very core functionality, is it eliminates the necessary steps to manually level the bed. So you're not screwing around with your, your big knobs underneath while it's printing and try to get everything working. It's gonna take Good. a reading of your bed and then use your Z-axis motor to compensate for any sort of variations in that bed. Awesome. So there's other uh, automatic bed leveling centers out there. Why the Easy ABL? So obviously I'm a little biased because I, I made <laughs> it and I own the company. Um, but the main, com the main competitor would be the BL Touch, which has a mechanical probe that comes down into place and touches your bed. Sure. Now, the room for user error with that is very high, okay. especially since they changed the new one where they're using plastic pins instead of metal. Oh. Um, and there's been a lot of reports of people breaking those pins and then the sensor's junk. Um, ours is a lot more robust okay. and it's a contactless sensor. So it's not actually nice. touching your bed, it's getting close and the sensor basically emits a field and it monitors that field and it checks to see if something's there, AKA your bed. Okay. And they're very accurate too, nice. so. So while we're installing the Easy ABL, we're gonna go through the process. Is there anything that we need to watch? Anything we need to look for? Uh, you said it doesn't touch the bed. If we change beds, do we need to do this process again? Now, it depends on the surface. Um, in our testing here, we've actually found that you don't actually re need to recalibrate the sensor. Some people sure. think you need to do. Um, nice. There's a thing called the Z offset, which tells the printer, how far do I need to move down after the sensor triggers to get the nozzle the correct height on the bed? Ah, uh, cool. And our firmware has a feature called baby stepping, which allows you to adjust that live, so nice. while it's printing down. So what we usually recommend is you have people nice. run a little skirt around your print, like a couple of millimeters away, and then you eyeball that and dial in your, dial in. your leveling while it's printing nice. the skirt. And, and just so we're clear, we do need to flash the firmware first. We're gonna use the TH3D Unified Firmware, correct. the brand new release, correct? Yes. Awesome. Yeah, and we make it really easy. You can always get the latest release by going to firmware.th3dstudio.com. Awesome. And that takes you directly to the download page. And so to do the firmware, we need to get something separate, right? Because there's no bootloader on the, on the Ender 3. And I think you guys sell, it's like an Adreno or something like that, right? Yeah. So uh, certain machines don't need it, but printers like the Ender 3, the Ender 3 Pro. Okay. Um, basically anything that has what's called a 1284P chip, which sure. we have this documented on our site too. Okay. And you can always contact us if you have any questions. You're okay. like, hey, I don't know what I have. You can shoot our support email Perfect. before you purchase and we'll tell you. Nice. Um, so, but all the bootloader does is allow you to load firmware over the USB port. Okay. Um, and it's a one-time thing. So you hook it up once, you connect some wires from your Uno to your printer board and you hook the Uno up to the computer and it burns the bootloader and then you can load USB firmware on Nice. It. So we're not gonna do that in this video. We're actually gonna have that already done, but I am gonna make another video about that just so you know how to do it. But if you do need that, he does sell them here at TH3D. I think they're somewhere in the bins right over yeah, here. Yeah, we have them somewhere um, over here. So you can check out Tim's website. He has them on there. And then if you buy it, I believe he offers like some support with that, right? Yeah, so okay. the, every ABL kit comes with one-on-one -on -one support through our email cool. system. Awesome. Um, and then also, if you do need the bootloader kit, we have that deeply discounted when you purchase it with an ABL kit. Nice. So if you get one of our easy ABL kits on that product page, you can get it. I think it's like four or five bucks off because nice. um, the kit is $16 normally. Okay. So, but we do like doing bundles and cool. I like saving money. So I like trying to save our customers money. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love that. So we're going to get rocking and rolling on the easy ABL install, but I think we need an easy ABL. Aaron, do you got one? Perfect. Let's go do this. 
All right, now that you saw Aaron toss me this Easy ABL direct wire kit, that's what we're gonna be using in today's video. We also have an OEM mount. And Tim told me if you order the Easy ABL kit uh, and you put a note in the order that you need an OEM mount, he'll send you one of these for free. So don't forget to do that if you need one at home. You can actually print this at home. There is an STL file for it as well. You can also follow along with the instructions if you go to easyablguide.th3dstudio.com. And that's what we're gonna be using to do this video. So let's do it. So we went ahead and opened up that package. It came with the Easy ABL sensor in the board. It came with the wires here. And like I said, if you put in the order notes that you need the OEM sensor mount, they'll send you one of those as well. So we already went through the pre-installation checklist. We're good to go and we're gonna start installing. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, Tim is actually gonna start installing the OEM mount. And we're gonna take out these two screws here. We're gonna remove those and then install the mount. And he's gonna start doing that. And this is uh, M3 bolts, Correct. right? Okay, cool. So we got M3 bolts and there's two of them. Now chances are you're gonna need longer bolts because Creality actually ships with different size bolts. Some are shorter and some are longer. So make sure you have an extra set of M3 bolts. And I believe these we're gonna use our M3 by eight. Yes. Perfect. So as you saw, it was real easy. It's just those two bolts. We take those out. Your fan housing here will come loose. With those two bolts, we're just gonna go ahead and tighten those back in. And it's hard to see, but this is the black mount that we're putting on right now. So we're gonna go ahead and do that one and the next bolt and we'll be right back. So the next thing we wanna do is go ahead and take our sensor. And Tim said we need to remove the lock nuts, right? Yes. These little guys? Nope, we don't need those, okay. So then he is currently screwing the nut back up the side of the Easy ABL and he's gonna put it in to the mount that was printed. And the goal here is to have this two millimeters higher than your nozzle. And he told me that the ender, the wrench that comes with the Ender 3 is actually two millimeters. So you can lower that down and he can show you there. So the idea is to get your nozzle down onto the bed, but not hard. <laughs> so what he just did was he put the sensor in and he put this wrench here and he lowered this down. So the nozzle is just touching the bed, correct? And the sensor is just touching the sitting on the wrench. And then he screwed this nut so it just sits on the mount here. So everything should be about lined up now. So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and raise your X gantry up and use the, use the uh, coupler on the left side of the printer just like Tim is doing there. So now what he's doing is he's putting the other nut on through the bottom, but he's holding the top so it's solid. And then what I usually do is I hold this bottom nut and turn the sensor. Perfect. Then you don't need a wrench. So that's awesome. So you just hold the bottom nut there and then turn your sensor in yes. to tighten it down. Turn it clockwise. Perfect. Now does that lower at all if you turn it? It does a little bit, but not enough where it's gonna affect anything. Perfect. Cool. On to the next step. So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and uh, unravel the wire that comes with it. And we're gonna run the wire. So working with Tim, he really likes to run it up and attach it around. And he's gonna show us properly how to do that without making it too tight down by your sensor. So the key, the key here is to have a little bit of loop here and secure zip tie or electro tape or cloth tape, whatever you have to leave a little loop here because then this is not going to be straining on here. If you put it like this, what's gonna happen is this is going back and forth. You can see how this is straining the cable and it's right. gonna lead to the wires inside here breaking. Gotcha. So I like to run them like this, especially on the Creality machines. We leave a little loop of wire. There's plenty of wire on these. And then I just take a zip tie and gently secure it. Like you're not going to crank this down. So get on here. Perfect. Close to the coupler. So this is what Tim was talking about. He came up here and made this loop. So it doesn't put a lot of stress on the end and doesn't break these wires. So now what he's doing is he's going to go ahead and attach uh, the wiring around the side here as you see him doing. So what we got here is Tim went ahead and used zip ties and they're not real tight. I mean, they're tight enough to hold everything, but not tight enough to pinch these wires and not tight enough to pinch your Bowden tube. And he zipped it up around the top of the Ender 3 wiring. And if you have your stock Ender 3 in there, you still have this wired in. Um, if you used our guide to build this, your Bowden tube is loose. You have two options. You can couple it back up with the, 
with the zip ties if you want to, or you can just zip the wire straight to the other wire loom. It's totally up to you. And so we got that all in and secure. We're gonna go on to the next step. Okay, so what I do on our machines here is we'll take all these cables here and bundle them together so it's all nice and neat. If you have the Easy Out filament sensor, you can also bundle the cable here and leave about three or four inches uh, for the sensor cable before you feed the filament in. But we don't have it on this printer, so we're just gonna go ahead and start bundling these. And it just makes it cleaner and make sure that these wires don't get caught on anything. So you so you just wire it all the way down through the wiring that's already there and you just attach it so it's all one nice yes. clean wires. Yeah, we have we have about a dozen Ender 3s here that are ABS farm and we have them all built out the same exact way. Awesome. And he's going to finish zip tying this and he's going to go all the way down to the bottom and we'll be right back. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is Tim is actually going to pre-strip the ends of these wires and he's going to use the included uh, side cutters that come with the Creality Ender 3 and he makes it look very easy, but uh, take your time and you can strip them or if you have a wire strippers at home, you want to use that. And it looks like you're just doing the black and the red wire, right? Yeah, there's two wires inside this one harness. Perfect. And then the next thing we need to do is go ahead and take off the top cover. Now I have a printed fan cover here, but it's three screws. It's uh, the one there, the one on that side, and then there's one more in the back. And that'll allow you to take the, uh, the top cover for the motherboard off. And this goes for the Ender 3 standard. If you're gonna use the Ender 3 Pro, you need to remove this from the bottom. So you'll have to turn your printer over and uh, remove that. So you're gonna pull this up, and when you do that, be careful, because your fan is attached, just like Tim pulled that out right there. And we're gonna go on to the next step. So now that you got the fan cover off, this is what you see. And if you go in here and you carefully move your wires over, you'll find this bank right here. And we're actually gonna be using that to install. So what you wanna do, and, and Tim is gonna do this in a second, is he's gonna actually loosen the first two right here and that's where we're gonna get our power from. So we always have power and it comes straight from the board. All right, so what we're gonna do now is take the included wires and push them right through the bottom of the back, just like Tim is doing. And that'll actually feed the included wires out and through, just like that. Then he's gonna go ahead and unscrew those first two terminals. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and twist the red wires together and we're gonna twist the black wires together um, so they're ready to go and we're going to put them back in to those first two terminals. So how it's going to go back in is red all the way to the end and then he's going to screw that in once you get them in good. There we go. And then black is going to sit right next to that. So there is a wiring diagram um, on the TH3D site for this and you can check that out if you need to. But just remember it goes uh, red first and then black. All right, so the next thing we need to do is go ahead and remove the Z end stop. And you can use the Allen wrench that came with the kit or a three millimeter hex. So the next thing uh, Tim is gonna do is go ahead and disconnect the Z end stop. After we started doing this, we realized that Creality actually shortened their Z end stop cables, this, this wire right here. So we're gonna change it up and we're actually gonna mount the control box right up here, that way all we have to do is cut the end here and mount it, and then the white wire here can come up where the fan goes, and we'll show you that in a little bit, and be a lot shorter as well. So we got all the wires cabled here, and we realized we have to mount the control box here. So what Tim's gonna do is go ahead and push the control box around through the side, and he's gonna mount it right on the side of that extrusion. And we are using the screws that came out of the Z end stop to do that. All right, so as you can see, uh, Tim mounted the control box actually on the side of the extrusion right here and it mounts really nicely right there. And we're going to go ahead and start wiring it now. So the next step is we got to take the top cover off the control box and Tim's going to work on that now. So he's actually going to cut the end of the connector off of the Z end stop. Now, Just I do recommend leaving a little bit here. So if you ever need to reconnect this, you can. So I usually cut it right about here. So leave about an inch. Yeah, Perfect. so you can still use this if you need to. For some reason, you gotta send this in for warranty or you know, something else down the road. So now you're just splitting the wires and you're gonna go ahead and strip them. Now when I'm using these, I'm barely putting any pressure on this. I'm just getting it to a point where it kind of holds on and then I pull. 
So if you have actual wire strippers, you can do that, but because we want to make sure you guys can do this with the tools you have, we're doing it this way. Now, because these are really thin wires Creality uses, I like to twist these, and I'm stripping them about twice as long as I need because what we're gonna do is once it's twisted, we're gonna fold it like that so our terminals have a little more meat to bite onto. All right, so the next step, what we wanna do is go ahead and loosen up the rear um, terminals there. Just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and insert the wires into the two terminals in the back. Now, does it matter which way they go in? It does, but you're not gonna know which way they need to be in until you do the test later on. Okay. So you might have to switch these two depending on your luck of the draw. You got a 50-50 shot of if this is gonna be correctly wired. This side will not damage anything if it's wired in reverse. Perfect. So it won't damage it if it's in reverse. And so we're gonna go ahead and get those two wires uh, pushed in and tightened and we'll be good. So the next thing Tim's gonna do is go ahead and take that uh, existing cable that comes out of the board and push it back in the channel where it goes and that should be good. And the next thing is the power wire. Yeah, so we don't obviously need this much wire. We include this length for, depending on what printer you're doing, where it's going, etc. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, you know, kind of eyeball this and see how much wire I need and then cut it. And then we're gonna strip it just like we did on the last time. So again, light force, so you're not gonna crimp down on this if you're using these. You're just gonna put light force on it and pull. And as you can see, sometimes you don't get it the first try, so just do it again and it'll come off. And then repeat for these wires too. And we're gonna do the same thing with these power wires as we did the end stop cables just because it's easier to insert, these will actually bite into the terminals. But I found that people say it's easier to do this and the screw terminals are big enough to fit this stuff doubled up in it. So if you want to have an easier time, you can do the strip it longer than you need. This is the total length you need to go into the terminal. But if you strip it twice as long, you have this nice rounded edge to get into the terminal instead of fighting with all the little strands of wires trying to get into it. If you look on the board here, which you can't see from the camera angle, but the one closest to me, which is the top of the board, it says TH3D Easy ABL at the bottom of the board. This top screw terminal is your positive, which is red, and then the bottom one is negative. So we're gonna go ahead and insert those just like we did the other one. And I usually give them a little tug, make sure they're in there. Now that we got everything wired, he did give it a little tug to make sure they're both tight. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and, what, clean it up? Okay, so while we're cleaning up the wires now at this point, um, Tim is actually, is going to show us a couple different ways to do it. We can actually zip tie the cables in the back and zip tie them in the back or what he prefers to do is loop them and then push them down through the bottom uh, where the other cables go into the board and they'll actually come up and it, you can actually pull them right up through the board there and you can hide them inside when we put the cover on. That way all that wiring is hidden and when you put the cover on, you won't see much of that wiring at all. So as you can see, Tim actually pushed the wiring down in and it's staying in there just like that. And it's all nice and clean. That way it's not hanging out the back. You don't have to worry about zip ties and the cover will go on so you don't even have to see it. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and clean up these wires and Tim's gonna walk us through that real quick. So basically you got your power wires here and there's the end stop. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of loop this around. You want to kind of follow the natural bend of the cable. Just tucking this all in so here. So you're going to kind of go up through the extrusion and then you're going to bend it down where the Z end stop came out before. Right, because we got this cut out so right have, here. So we have the groove in the, where the Z end stop came up and that'll actually go nicely in there. Correct, so I'm going to reconnect the fan here to the little fan header, which is a pain to get to always because there's always other wires in the way. But we'll get it, we'll get it. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and I like to check, make sure that there's no wires hitting this fan because otherwise you'll get a terrible noise when you turn on the printer. <laughs> so I'm gonna make sure all the wires that we ran out here go into this little channel on the cutout. Perfect. And then we're gonna go ahead and screw this in and come back. And we're gonna put, yeah, we're gonna take the fan cover I had, the two screws here and the one in the back. We're gonna put that together and we'll be right back. <laughs> so while we're putting the fan on, we had a cat come up and help, flopped right over on the table with us. All right, so what you see now is it's a little bit loose. We had to loosen this up to slide everything this way a little bit so the cover will go on in a little bit. But we did not put the cover on yet because now we need to test the sensor. 
So we're gonna go ahead and plug the machine in and we'll be right back. So now that we got the machine plugged in, we went ahead and raised our X gantry almost all the way up. So what we want to do now is turn on the machine, just like that. And no magic smoke, so that's good. <laughs> and then we're going to go ahead and do an auto home, right? So we're going to go ahead and hit the button, go to prepare, hit the button and go to auto home and hit the button again. And a way to see if we are wired correctly in the actual control board for the Easy ABL is to go ahead and try to touch it while it's coming down. As you can see, it's not stopping, which means we're not wired correctly. So those two little wires that we put in before need to be switched. And that's good that we can show you that. So we're going to do that now. So as you can see, we loosen this up because what we need to do is go ahead and loosen these two screws and pull those wires out. So we just need to flip those wires around. So what we did was we went ahead and loosened these up and we took the left one and put it in the right and we took the right one and put it in the left. That way the wires are gonna be incorrectly now. Basically, like I said, we're just switching those wires around inside of the control board where they go in here and that should make our center trigger now. Now that we have those wires swapped, we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. So the machine's on, we're gonna go ahead and hit the button, uh, go to prepare, hit the button, go to auto home, and we're gonna do another auto homing just like we did before. Except for this time, when Tim puts his finger underneath the sensor, it should stop. Just like that. Perfect. So in the guide, it says you can do an M119 command to make that happen. The easiest way is to just do an auto home like we did, hit the button, go to prepare, hit the button, go to auto home, hit the button, you'll see those two will home, and then what you do is just, as soon as it starts coming down, start touching it, and now you know your Easy ABL is wired correctly, we can go ahead and finish mount on the control box and put everything back together. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the, the printer off at this point. Okay, so now we got the control module mounted down like we said here, and we slid the cover back on the top of the control module you took that off earlier and now you can see how everything's run I'll use this so our white cable goes down where the ZN stop used to be right through here the ZN stop comes through the side right there there's just enough gap to make that work and it plugs into here and now it's tested so what we need to do is go ahead and calibrate the sensor okay so the next thing we want to do is go ahead and turn on the Ender 3 and we're gonna go ahead and put the bed back on. And for your enjoyment, you get a half a cat right here. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and put our bed back on. In my case, I have the glass bed with the TH3D Easy Mat. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and heat our bed up to whatever your average uh, print temp is. In my case, I use about 60 C. So we're gonna stop at about 60. So while that's heating up, we're going to go ahead and lower this down to about, what, f five millimeters off the bed, roughly? Yeah, just before your nozzle touches. So as long as your nozzle's not touching, you're good. And then we're going to go ahead and heat this bed up with a sensor right here. So the next step is the calibrator sensor. And what that means is setting what distance this triggers at. And we want this to trigger before the nozzle hits the bed because I don't want to be putting holes in your beautiful bed mat. So. I'm going to raise this up a little bit and I'm going to slide the wrench that we use to mount the sensor underneath the nozzle. Now if you don't have a wrench you can always manually put it down and then tell your Z to move up. So I'm just going to show you that too. So I'm going to take this back out and now my nozzle's on the bed. So I'm going to go here, go to prepare, move axis, move Z, and then move one millimeter and we're going to move this up too one two and now we can calibrate our sensor and all the calibrate means it sounds just like a scary word but we're just going to adjust this little adjustment pot on the top so i'm going to use a little phillips precision screw this is a 2.5 you can also use a tube but you don't want to use too big because then you're going to scrape the walls of the the sensor housing here if you notice obviously our sensor mount has some flex to it when you're adjusting this you don't want to put any pressure on it you want to just Basically, let the screwdriver sit here and turn it clockwise until the light turns on. And it may take a couple turns, or, or even more than a couple. It depends. But you'll see the light turn on, 
and we will get the light to come on. There we and go. And then we're going to go back just to make sure we get it perfectly dialed. Then we're going to go back till it shuts off and then come back again. If you notice, it takes a little bit more of a turn to get it to come back on and go off. That is completely normal. So when I move my hand away from here, you want to see that this light is on. At this point now, our sensor is calibrated and we can verify by going and auto homing it again and it should stop before it touches the bed. So now that we got the sensor dialed in and the light came on like you saw, we're gonna go ahead and do another auto home. So go to prepare and then go to auto home like we did before and you should see it crosses and then it should auto home just like that. Now one of the things we can do too is if we want to verify that you actually calibrated correctly and that your printer is mechanically sound is we have a feature in here called the M48 test. And you can do this from a G-code command, but we baked it into the LCD on our version of Marlin. So if I go to prepare and scroll down a little further, right after home Z, you'll see run M48 test. So this is going to home all and then take 20 probes and a probe consists of a fast and slow probe and then it's going to spit out what's called the standard deviation. So this is going to run, and if you just leave the LCD here, it will go back to the main screen, and it says M48 test running. And once it's done doing these tests, you will see your M48 result on here. And what you want is to have the M48 result under 0 0.01, and that's good. So if you're lower than 0 0.01, that means your sensor's calibrated, correctly and your printer is mechanically sound, meaning your Z is moving correctly and all this other stuff. So we just got a M48 result here of 0.002427. So this sensor is reading an accuracy level of 0.002 millimeters. Wow. And you want at least 0 0.01, so we're way under. We're, we're way, way under. Our really. on a, on a well-built printer, meaning it's mechanically sound, we have no electrical issues, we've got the mean well on here, so I don't expect to have any electrical problems. You should see double zeros in here and these are way more accurate than even the BL touch like BL touch average is about 0 0.02 0 0.03 um, these these consistently beat it out in accuracy all the time awesome so we got a mechanically sound printer that we built using uh, Luke's help guy yeah. and we have a really awesome easy ABL sensor that we put together courtesy of you guys at TH3D so I think we should uh, do a test print and see if how it goes absolutely all right let's do it Okay, so we have the filament loaded, and we're gonna go ahead and do a test print. And what we're gonna do is take an STL file that is right in the uh, file section of the TH3D firmware package. The folder you wanna look for it is, is bed level STL files, and I'll go ahead and put that in the video in a second. Okay, so what we did was we went ahead and loaded the SD card. We went on to the SD card, and we told it to start printing the 200 millimeter test code. So what it's going to do is heat the nozzle up to 230 and heat the bed up to 60 and we're going to start our test print and we'll be right back as soon as that's heated up. Okay, so it got heated up and now we're going to go ahead and start the process of probing the bed. It'll start in the center and then it'll go ahead and do nine points along the whole bed. So at this point, it did the probe and it went to the back corner here. So when it starts moving, we want to hit the button two times and you'll see probe Z offset. And when it starts going, you wanna look under the nozzle and start dialing it downwards. Downward is this way. And we know that that probe is two millimeters off the top of the bed. So we need to dial this probe Z offset to about, what'd we uh, say there? Oh, too high, too high. Too low. too low, there we go. So right now I have it at about 1.4. And you can see we're getting a pretty good line now. The offset's going to vary based on each printer. So yours will not match what he has here. Right. So you just want to watch your print as it's going around. If it needs to go closer to the bed, you can dial it counterclockwise. If it needs to go uh, higher from the bed, you can dial it clockwise. And just kind of watch for your layer lines. And remember that the probe is about 2 millimeters off the bed. In our case, we have it at 1.4 millimeters down for the Z offset and we're getting really good lines now. So what you wanna do then is when you think you're dialed in and good, you go ahead and click the button, click it again and go to control, click it and scroll down to store settings. Hit the button there and you'll hear the little verbal like okay. 
Um, that will not be there if you use the filament sensor, right? Yeah, the easy out. Yeah, so if you use the easy out, you won't hear that. But in this case, we don't have that. You're going to hear that verbal OK. And you know that we're set now at 1.4 on the offset. And that's actually looking really good. All right, so when it is completely done, it'll fill in everything here and it'll fill in the outsides and it'll create all your lines here. And you should have a really good um, first layer. It looks pretty good, probably a little close like Tim was saying here during the uh, time lapse, but we can adjust that just a little bit with our Z offset like we did before. Um, anything else you want to throw in, Tim? Uh, well, and the other thing is too, like I was mentioning, I actually forgot, because I set up his firmware, I forgot to set the probe edge in. Usually on these beds I probe in a little bit further, so we're probing in 15 millimeters from the sides. I usually do about 30, and you can tell like this side, you can see they're pretty close in terms of the height, and setting the probe edge would give us a little more consistency across the entire bed, but this isn't bad though. This, this is really good, for especially for a first go. But if you guys do ever have issues like this, you can contact our support and we can give you direction on what to change in your firmware. Perfect. So that's what it should look like. And uh, you know, that's awesome. We're good to go. All right. So as you saw, we just went ahead and we installed the Easy ABL from TH3D and Tim did most of the installing. So that was pretty <laughs> awesome. And we ran the uh, red atomic silk filament actually to do our test print down here when we were making sure the Z offset was correct. Anything else you want to add? Um, that's about it. Just make sure you follow the installation guide. This video is going to be awesome because it's specific to the Ender 3. It's a very popular machine. Just make sure to check, as uh, Jim noticed uh, when we were examining the bed leveling result, uh, he was a little closer on this side because he just moved this and the gantry is a little off, but yep. he's going to take care of that. So check your gantry, make sure it's level with the printer's frame on either side because the system compensates for bed tilting, warping, etc., not for your gantry being off. Yep. With that being said, I'm going to throw the X gantry rework and the bed leveling video in the bottom there. Um, the other thing you can also do is buy the TH3D uh, solid mounts and they actually replace the springs here so you never have to loosen those springs again. It just makes it all solid. I did a video on that. If you go back in the history, I'm going to install that on this later. But for now, that's how we do it. I think it's time to head back home, though. Yeah, I think it's getting a little late. It was like 7, 7, yeah, 30, it's, 7.30? It's late. We've been here. It's, <laughs> it's been a long day, but I'm going to zap myself back home. Here we go. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'm back. Well, I tell you what. We now have a TH3D Easy ABL on the Ender 3 right here behind me. And it was awesome. A special thanks goes out to Tim and Aaron of TH3D for rocking and rolling and having us come down on Easter to film this video. It was a lot of fun and we really had a blast. I tell you what, the best part about this is I don't have to level my bed anymore. One thing you do have to remember is that you wanna go down below and grab the link for the TH3D firmware. When you do that, you're gonna get a file in there for the starting G-code. You're gonna to need to use that G-code going forward on all of your files for the Ender 3, that way it probes correctly before each print. You want to make sure you do that. Also, don't forget to make your X gantry completely level. If you didn't already do that, I'll put the video in the description below and make sure that's good. You'll want to do that because these printers print so much better when the X gantries are level. With that being said, I hope you learned something today and as always, keep printing. Hey everybody, I want to hear from you in the comments below. I want to know what your favorite bed leveling tool is. Is it a BL Touch? Is it a TH3D Easy ABL? Or maybe something I don't know about. Maybe you just love the stock springs. I don't know. Well, let me know in the comments below because I'd love to see what your favorite tool is. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up and give me a like. If you want to see more, click that little subscribe button right here. And if you want to get notified every time a great video comes out, click that little bell. I really appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget we have PayPal and Patreon. Both links are in the bottom and every little bit counts. You guys rock.